All right, let's do this. So what I got, this here is the Prinsu Designs Roof Rack by CBI Off-Road Fabrication. And I'll be showing you how to install it. Some helpful things I learned along the way. How to take down the headliner, how to install the roof rack, how to get those factory roof rails off on your Subaru Outback. Some things to know before you get started is you'll want to have your sunroof open all the way and your windows down before you disconnect your battery. That'll come in handy later on. Since you'll be touching your headliner a lot, you'll want to have clean hands so you don't make a mess of this thing. Some sort of rubber or latex or nylon gloves to keep your fingers and hands clean and from getting your roof liner dirty. You'll want to have your pockets empty of anything sharp or that could scratch your paint since you'll be working a lot on the outside of the vehicle too. If you use any sort of hair product to keep your hair styled, I would recommend maybe not using that on the day you do your headliner install. Uh, so it doesn't leave any discoloration or anything on the material up here. Some tools you'll want to have on hand are some Torx sockets, a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a 10 millimeter socket, an 11 millimeter socket, a socket extender to get to some of those harder to reach bolts, a drill, a 3 8 inch drill bit, waterproof silicone, some rubber, nylon, or latex gloves, and some rubbing alcohol to clean off the spots before you put down your silicone so you get a watertight seal. Some things that aren't required but could be very helpful are an old bike tire iron to help get off some of these trim pieces. I found that extremely useful. You could get an old used bike inner tube to wrap around the feet of this roof rack so it doesn't scratch your roof when you set it down. It also helps to hold it in place. If you get the noise reducing trim piece for the roof rack like I did, you could also put down some clear contact paper on the front of your trim above the windshield to prevent it from scratching the paint itself if any dust or debris gets in there and vibrates while you're driving. It's not required, but you could also use a file to clean up some of the edges around the four holes that you drilled out on each side. Also, if you're lucky like me and strip out one of the screws when you're threading it in, you might want to have a thread tap on hand. And last but not least, most mandatory things for this install are patience, good attitude, and a good helper wouldn't hurt to have. So for this part we just loosened them up as much as we could because then it gives them enough room to fit down in there. You just gotta line it up just right and then slips right in. So I guess I could have done this part before but in the box, because I've got everything all taken out now, you've got your front pairing piece, a couple bags of stuff. Where these are. There's one little bag that had all ten of these um, the screw, the lock washer, the flat washer, and then the little T slot piece in the back. There's this kit here that I believe is for um, putting the crossbars onto these guys. And then there's this bag for the mounting hardware for the roof portion. Also got some gasket things that I still need to figure out where those go. The soundproofing tubing that looks that is difficult to show in this lighting boy. But this is the little gasket that goes along the bottom of this here. You've got your side pieces here. One. Got the wait, wait, crossbars. Wait. We What's only that? have one. Nope, oh, there's two. Oh. There's these it. two here. Packaged up real nice, got the other crossbars in the box. Came with a bunch of nice brown packing paper, keep it all nice and safe. And we're just working on tightening down the screws right now. So for the bolt hardware that mounts the um, wind deflector onto the silver crossbar, I just put them together like this. We've got that uh, the bolt, the lock washer, this flat washer with the smooth setup. And then for this little bottom guy, let that pointier part just face out. And it real nice. Nice and uh, two extras. So if you ended up goofing any on this, you are set with extras. So we're going to get the crossbar pieces on right now. We're starting on the back side of this one. We've got the screws on there, the lock washers and flat washers. One last thing that so. you should be. Oh, so for this these side, are hex. Oh, yeah. These are, looks like what, four or five millimeter thick um. screws. Sorry, forgive my video skills. And for this back one here, I've opted to put the uh, mounting slots towards the inside just because I don't think I'll be putting anything 
on this rear face here. And if I do, I can always flip this in the future. All right, so now we're getting the crossbars on. Got the bolt, lock washer, flat washer. And uh, starting on this back side here, I've got the front side up there, the pointy end. Um, and for these back ones, I've personally opted to put the uh, mounting slots towards the inside because I don't anticipate putting anything on this back face just yet. And if I do, I can always flip this after the fact. These here are uh, quarter inch Torx or Torx sockets. I don't know if you can see that on here or not, but you'll need a quarter inch torque head for that. And I'm gonna get all these popped on. So these crossbar pieces here. For anyone wondering, these go through the small slots, not the big ones, because then it just holds it in place real well. Okay, well this is looking really cool. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like. Look at that. Look at that. Piece of art. Oh, there's something in it. Oh, that'll do it. I'm trying to figure out why one of these screws won't go in. Just one single one. Being stubborn. Bring so, all that was holding this up there was just um, a little bit of extra metal shards from when they machined out the threads inside here. So, I just took a toothpick, cleaned those out, and we are back in action. And like with the hardware for the front, they sent uh, two extra bits of hardware for the roof rails. When you're putting on your crossbars, if you're OCD like me, definitely make sure you put all your slots on the same side because if you have this bar, flipped around, then these will be reversed, and then they'll be off and not consistent, and it bugged the heck out of me, so I had to <laughs> end up flipping these two. So a little update on the bolt situation. This is the stock bolt size that came with the rack, um, and to get these plus nuts to expand, you have to have the existing bolt go thread through and then pull it to expand that out. This guy wasn't quite long enough to reach where the threads start on that plus nut. So I just grabbed an extra like one inch, half inch, whatever longer bolt out of our bolt bin here. So just following through the instructions, just gonna first disconnect our batteries, then when I've got my uh, back hatch up and the door is open, it's not gonna <laughs> bring my battery out and I'm not gonna zap anything or myself on the inside trying to disconnect stuff. No build is ever really truly complete without coffee. Don't let, let anyone tell you otherwise, so drink up. So, following their instructions, we got our focus battery disconnected. Gonna take apart this rear trim here. Right up in here, there's a screw. Um, so, I already had that apart at once. So, just gonna take that piece off. Okay, so my phone ran out of space partway through that last little bit there, so I'm gonna switch to my actual camera now. We'll continue. I did a little bit without it any recording here. So what I've done is I just popped this panel out. There's a couple tabs in here. One, two, three, four, and those. So this just sits right up here like this. So these tabs are like so for you to see. And I found that with this one here being so sticking out so far, I just waited to do that one last, and I just popped out this top side first, and then that let this bigger guy slip out the bottom there. Real nice and easy. Then you just open this guy up, there's a Phillips head screw in there, just took that out, pop that guy here. When you move to the passenger side, this is a little bit different. Um, what you do here is you open this guy, like you did on that other side. There's a, another Phillips screw in there. Um, then I've got a bike tire iron that I used to pry up this corner right here. Once this is up, then you can pull this out, give it a nice firm tug, because there's these, uh, <laughs> there are these tabs back here that clip in real good to that right there. So you just pull, give a nice firm tug on this. Those will pop right out, this one here. There's a third one down here too that you can pop out if you would like, don't have to. 
Um, and then what I did was with this pulled back, there's a screw right here, or was, I took it out. Um, but you pull this back just far enough to get your Phillips, because it's at a bit of an angle, so you don't want to uh, strip the head of the screw out. And then you just give it a good twist to unscrew it and take it out with your fingers so you don't drop it. And that's that part. I'm going to do a little bit more here, and then I'll give you guys another update and see if we can focus. There we go. <laughs> Camera transition. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so this driver's side piece here gave me a bit of an ordeal because I did, it took me and all my blazing brilliance quite a while to realize this screw right here was holding everything together. So this sits up like so. What you have to do is you've already taken out this screw. Again, like on the passenger side, you take your bike tire pry tool or plastic pry tool, whatever you have, pull this up and then this guy right here, that Phillips head screw, goes right into this hole. So you just take your Phillips, come straight through here, loosen it a bit, hold this out, try and take it out that last bit with your fingers. It's a little tricky just because the shape of that opening there. Um, yeah, I'm off of the video stuff. <laughs> and so you just try and take that out as best you can. I got really lucky and accidentally dropped mine. It landed right down there and I was able to grab it. Um, other than that, the helpful things that I learned from this piece here is each of these one, two, three spots has its own little push tab right here. Um, let's see if we can let in some more light. There we go. Aha. Oh, goodness. Now I doubt the feel is really shallow. Ah, so you've got this little push tab here, and you just push down on that guy. You can actually access it from down inside here on each of these. So you just push that down, and then that part will come free. The tricky part then is getting this backside free, because you've got this weird steel right here. It, I just basically put my hand here, gave this a good tug back. That came free from a little bit up under here which was kind of a pain to get that out. It looks like it just clips around this little shark fin looking piece that for whatever reason looks orange in the video, but it's black in real life. Another thing before I move to that other side that's helpful to know about the driver's side here is um, there's this little plastic pop socket things. Um, so you gotta give a nice tug on this guy to get that free. And that's in large part what made this edge tricky to get out. This back edge up in there. Also, another side note, there's, so on this driver's side, there's a total of these three, I'll call them the pop sockets, whatever. One, two, three, and those are positioned. One here, one there, and one way down back in there. I don't know if you can see that guy. He's like under the trim piece. I should stick to pictures, yes. There, that guy. <laughs> That's the third one. <laughs> so there's those three pop socket deals that you gotta pop out to get this piece here free. So you can access up here. And now we'll move to this side. I'm probably making my life in post a lot more difficult than it needs to be because I keep changing camera settings. <laughs> but on this passenger side here, for removing this trim piece, you've already popped out the pop socket here. You've got one, two. I was able to spot those just from making my way up here. I was able to pull it back and see that there was this this one to pop out. I found the second one. And then once I was up in here, I could see down, well, wrong way, down in there that there are those two others to also pop out. One right there, another right there. You pop those guys out and then you can see even there's this other clip guy here and you can just push that to get this other piece free see if i can do it on video no i can't all right so we'll come back when that's done okay so this is free this guy sits right up here like so you've got one two three pull tabs and then that shark fin slidey deal thing 
over here again that you got to get out. You've got your one, two, three pop sockets that are positioned. Let's see if I can get this. So it's just one pop socket, two pop sockets, three pop sockets. This one that I spotted earlier that looked like it needed to come out doesn't actually because that's part of this piece here. So we can just leave that. I feel like Chris fix this here. We need soapy water. Now back to the install. These window trim pieces that go up and around here, just this one little plastic pin that you need. So you just take a little flat head, pop it up in the edge here, pull this guy down, and then this just pulls. Dude, this is the steadiest camera work ever. Okay. If this won't come out right away, this second piece, once I get this out, I can show you. Uh, I'll show you what this looks like. If I can find a good spot. Here, we'll put the white background. Nice. Alright, so this here, here, here. Um, this is that little pin that's holding it in place. When it's installed, it's clipped like this. You just put a little flathead under here, pry it back a bit. I'm very bad at this. Pry it back a little bit. Um, and then, if it won't come out right away, then it's probably because um, the pieces of this outer one are hitting the little pointy end down here. Um, so you might need to just push this part back in a little bit to get that to then um, close around it all the way so this can be shrunk down as much as possible. And then that just pulls right out and you are set and there's that. Okay, so we've got the window side trim pulled out. Found another little pain in the behind piece. There's this, I tell you, these little shark fin things. There's this little shark fin here that sits inside this little groove here. But when this is under that trim there, it's very difficult to <laughs> try and slide it that way to get it around the little shark fin like I think they want you to. So what I ended up doing is I just pulled this guy up a bit, pulled my shark fin up a bit, and then was able to pull it out. This piece here is held in with that one um, clippy guy that we took out earlier, and then these one, two, three, four beautiful pop sockets, and then the obnoxious shark fin down there. That's your little plastic popper. This black guy came from right there. Blue one went here, blue one went here, white one went here, white one went here. That's those. And it's the same thing for the driver's side here. So we're gonna take this guy out, show you guys what it looks like once that's out. Let's do an experiment. I'm gonna leave my camera propped up on this box here, see what kind of deal we can get going with this. So I've got this partway propped out. Okay, there we go. Um, so we're gonna take this guy out. There we go. We'll keep track of that. And then this just pulls down. This is brutal. Woo, okay, that is out. That is scratched. Cute. That'll come out. That'll buff out. Alright, here we go. Oh, the fun part. Our little shark fin. Alright, so I found just now. Um, I don't know what all you can see of this because I don't have a flippy screen. But, I pulled this piece out. I was able to get my finger back in there to push the little shark fin piece. And I was able to push the shark fin piece up, get it around the little dumb hole. Got it out. Again, just like that last side, the little black clip, blue clip, blue clip, and then the two more white clip, white clip. So just those four once you've got the black pin out. So we've got both window trim pieces out now, and moving on. Alright, at this point it basically feels like a live install video. So we've got, alright, here, we'll do a rundown. We undid our screws. We undid the little plastic tabs holding in this piece, undid that screw holding it in back there pulled this out, undid the screw here, undid that, one screw there, pulled the plastic tabs, pulled this piece out, took out, oh goodness, took out our black clippy deal up here, popped out those two blue ones, the two white ones, to get our window trim out. On that passenger side, did the same thing on the driver's side here, and now we'll see what's next. Alright, so. We've got these out. Um, window trim panel is out. 
Now I removed the passenger side of the vehicle. I already got the passenger side done because I did it as I went. Now we're taking out our little dome guy right up here. Let's do that. I think I'm gonna use the bike pry tool. 10 out of 10, can't see what this looks like, but we will do it live. I'm trusting that's in focus. Um, Sure, here we go. This will be great. Probably gonna have a really weird angle of my face in this. So for these, the highly professional way to do it is to just start messing around with stuff until you get somewhere. That's how everything works in life, I'm pretty sure. Alright, so, ah, actually wasn't all that too bad. There are these little one, two, three, four plastic clips holding this guy into there. Um, so you just pry around the edges and this will come right out. It's got this little connector adapter thing. I'm gonna set my camera down, unplug that, and then we can move on. So we've got that taken out. So we're gonna take off the plastic handles. There's just the little clips that hold the screws in. Oh, get closer so you can see that. Um, there's just little plastic clips that should be covering some screws. So we'll just take those out. That shouldn't be too bad. While we're at it, we'll go scoot closer up to the driver's side pop off these little panels, take out those Phillips, um, pull these guys back a bit to get it opened up like that. I said that really weird. Uh, move to the rubber trimmer on the sunroof. That'll be exciting. And then the sun visor tabs. Hanger first. So, let's scoot up to these guys. This is a quick shameless plug for this handy dandy tank of water that I got from Walmart for like four bucks. It's 2.5 gallons, fancy little pull nozzle down here, um, and uh, carry handle, 2.5 gallons, that beats the Rotopax one, sure you can't bolt it onto a roof rack, but I mean, for $4, that sure beats 50, and yeah, so, Ice Mountain at Walmart, get yours today. <laughs> On with the video. Side note about that water. Definitely took that with me when I went on my trip to Duluth, and that was super handy for filling up my water bottle um, and filling up my pot of water to boil for making meals and stuff. Very handy. Okay, so for up here, these are actually really, really easy to get out. They've just got this little dinky plastic pull tab that you just pull back with like a fingernail, gets it flush. Really easy to do, and then you just simply lift the thing out so if you just pull it with your fingernail and then just push it up with a flat head or with your other fingernail that I might even be able to do this one-handed here if I can y'all owe me cookies oh look at that okay I got way too excited for that so there's that and apparently yeah, there we go so that was easy Next. Hoop. All right. Challenge accepted. I'm gonna see if I can do this one. Also, one hand over one full 15 miles here. All right. Whoa. No gloves were harmed in the making of this video. Ta da! There we go. I'll give you guys a closer look at these up here. Okay, so I went and got one of those little clips out and this is what it looks like in real, real person life. Um, so I'm just gonna go pop this guy back in. This whole thing is basically creamy smooth b-roll, essentially, with perfect focus. Oh gosh, them angles. All right, that's great. That's great. So, b-pillar. Oh, let's get these guys out. There's a Phillips screw in there, so we'll take our Phillips screwdriver from the top and sides, pull out on the B-pillar plastic. We can do that, and we will. And then it's held in place by plastic push tabs. Great, here we go. Also, we will need our flathead. Whip the camera, transitions. Whip it back in. All right, here we go, folks. Oh, there we go, that's handy. All right. So, we've got this. I'm gonna use my bike tool. 
Okay, yeah, 10 out. Oh. All right, that's out. So I'd recommend prying from the top, because it's also because it's got that little spot. You get this one free, there's those two that should pop themselves out on the sides, um, and then you'd be able to lift it up off of these. It comes right out, and you can get to your Phillips. Well, this one's in there quite well, and my headrest is already all the way back. There we go. This one, folks, is very snug. You may want to have massively husky muscular arms like me in order to get these out. Uh, okay, and 10 out of 10, don't recommend dropping these while you're doing that. So, okay, where are you? All right, so I can feel it. Now I'm just gonna professionally pull on that. There we go. All right, I've got my screw. We're good, guys, we're good. Set that aside. All right, so we've got that free. So it feels like they're just little plastic clips just holding this guy in. So I'm just gonna run my fingers along this edge here and pop those out. Massively husky arms. All right, that I don't know how much of this comes off here, but let's see what we can do. Oh, okay, so this black part separates from the tan part. Wow, great. Okay, let's. We are making progress, my dudes. seatbelt locked itself. I promise I'm not crashing. I don't know how to unlock it. There we go. I have to unlock the seatbelt. Alright. So, we got that out. So this little guy came out while I was at it. <laughs> not sure where that's from. So that's fun. We'll just uh, set him aside over there. And let's look at the back of this. Oh, let's see. All right, so as it sits in the vehicle, this just rotates and goes back up in like that. So there was that one screw up here that we took out, and then it was just these little plastic gigs on the sides that held it in. These two um, holes down here, you just slide the whole piece up. There's a little pink tabs down in here. One, two, little pink guys. You just pull it straight up and it'll come right off of those. That's what was giving me a little bit of trouble earlier. There. there we go. This trim color is beautiful. Thank you, Subaru. And we'll reset that. Great. All right, that's out. This side. All right, so this is also a 10 mil socket on here. Here's the one that I took out from the other side. Um, so it's a little 10 mil sockety boy. So I'm just gonna grab a 10 mil and do that so I don't strip it out. Ten mil. I want an extender. Um, here we go. This will do. There we go. All right. And then that. That was a lot easier than the Phillips screwdriver, so I would probably recommend this to anyone else. It's probably the most amusing install slash interior teardown video you've seen. Maybe ever, maybe not, I don't know. We will hold our screw in place and pop this, where is this? There we go. I don't know why this isn't wanting to come out, but I'm fine with it if it's not falling. Oh, hey, I figured it out. That's where our little red guy comes into play. So back here, 
that is where that little red guy came in handy. It was holding the back of this bolt so it doesn't fall out, so you don't drop it. So that guy is, that's why it's not coming out. He's nice and snug in there. So I can go ahead and take out this whole trim piece here now. I'll do that. I'm just prying up on these sides. And then I just pull the black bit forward, push the white one back. So when I did this one, the stinking pink tab got itself wedged under that lip, pulled the whole thing out. So I'm just gonna pop this back into place. So then when I'm reinstalling this, all I have to do is just push the piece of trim down onto it and we're set. And this, I don't know if you can see that from here, just goes into that little hole right there. So we'll push this back in, watch with my luck, I'll drop it. Got the front driver's side and passenger side handles taken off just like those uh, rear ones. Super easy. Alright, for the sun visor clips, this one took me a hot second to figure out, um, but it's not that bad. This guy sits up in there like so. And you just take you just take your flathead, poke it in through the side right here, push down on that little tab. And then it pulls this guy back enough that you can get that out real slick and easy. And you have to do it on both sides, um, is what I had to do to get mine out. Just gonna leave that there. This cover up here was honestly like the easiest thing ever. You could probably even do this with fingernails. It's just um, those four little baby tabs that hold it on here, here, and on those back two sides. So all I did was just pop my flathead under on this these two sides here and then it just came right out and then it gives us access to the Phillips screws so we can take off the whole sun visor assembly once you've got this guy out you just pull it back far enough and then there's this little um, connector you just push on that top bit there pulls the thing right apart comes off real easy when you're taking out these screws here and here take them out one at a time nice and slow so you don't drop them um, I mean you're not going to really lose them down to the floor here um, but just take them out nice and slow so you don't lose those um, and then support the sun visor as you're taking out that second one there. The connector here for the sun visor piece, this, this bit here and this black bit here have some sort of sticky greasy stuff on them it feels like um, and I don't want that getting on my sun visors. So T-Swift is my car modding music I might say. Definitely my go-to. All right, I'm actually curious if I can do this just with my fingers. Yes, you can. So that, all I did for that one was just pulled from this backside back here and that came right out. And then I'm just collecting those down here so I don't lose them. Then this guy, again, is those two flat head deals. Mine here is a little too wide to fit in there so I'm gonna go grab a thinner one just so I don't scratch up the side of my plastic. So, okay, I just got to pry it out. What I did was I first pried out this side, held my finger here, stuck the flathead in here to pull out that other side without letting this first side pop back in, and then that just comes right out. Drop that down here, save it for later. These screws are a bit more stiff than you would think, so take your time when you're first starting them so you don't strip the threads out on the head of them. And Take them out nice and slow so you don't drop them. And then I'm putting those in here as well. Okay, so for getting this bit out, what I found helpful just now is if you pry it first, pull it towards the windshield side, and then see if you can pop out that, this back side here, and then this front barbed one uh, should come out pretty easily. And then again, we've got that connector, so I just pull this through until it's right there. And then I've got, I can't look and watch my camera at the same time. You just pop that out, comes right out. And then we'll set this back here. 
and collapse that. No, we'll just leave it, whatever. All right, so got that out, got that out. Um, I think for my purposes, I'm going to make sure I have clean gloves <laughs> before I touch this. Uh, see if I can leave this in and do the rest of the install because I just was at the dealership the other day getting my um, first free oil change and a uh, tire rotation there. And um, I was asking one of the service guys about this and they said, because uh, I asked him if he had any tips for getting this headliner out and he said just take your time, take it easy, don't break tabs or anything, it's not too terrible. Um, and he said he was pretty sure you could get the roof rails off with leaving all the center stuff intact so I might not have even needed to take off that back dome light because um, he was pretty sure as long as you can get just the sides down then you should be able to access the bolts so I'm gonna see if that's true or not just because I've got the eyesight technology and I don't want to mess with that <laughs> if I don't have to um, so yeah see what goes on there this bit here isn't too hard I was already just started this while I was talking you just pull out this top piece I can't get this single-handedly I don't think there's just a little piece in here that you have to rotate and pull maybe I can get it maybe not no I'm gonna oh hey look at that so yeah this guy just twists and comes out this is also 10 out of 10 not in focus so yeah this is what's in this little slot here you just pull that out um, and then I'm not entirely sure about this bit further down here, so I'm gonna go... Okay, that was dumb. I literally could have done that on camera. This literally just pulls straight out, and then you're done. And then this whole thing is out. It's just, these aren't even tabs. They're just little flat things that hold it snug down in there, so... There's that. Check that in the back where it belongs. And then, let's see if we can do this one here for you. So this just pops right out. There's, again, one of those pop sockets right here. Right, yeah, let's, let's zoom. Right, right here, this black bit here. That's one of those pop socket -y type things. Ah, oh, I bet I can't get this one handed, so. All right, I got that pesky little guy free. And now this just Holes straight out. Just give it a little wiggle to get that bottom part free. There we go. Drop it in the back, call it a day. And then you can observe your beautiful airbag. My little battery's charging up on my phone playing my music. Let's get crazy. Oh, let's see, so we've got our directions here. We've got that out. They say remove that metal overhead light. I'm gonna leave it in. They say take down this dome light. It should just pull out from the front. Um, and I 10 out of 10 believe them on that one, but I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna see if I can leave these back center clips too. Um, might take that back in a minute here when I go to get the bolts out. But if I go to pop the sides down, I should be able to see our bolts in here. And I should also be able to focus so you guys can see um and yeah see if i can get those bolts out those are i'm assuming going to be 10 mils again so we'll just keep this guy handy forgot one little bit here i'm going to see if i can get this to focus somewhere up here and then basically we just take this trim off of here and then that gives us ah, free range um let's see I'm going to try and keep this oriented how it was up there, so I'm going to set this up in my windshield just how it was when it was up here. So then all I have to do is just bring it back, put it up in, and seal it. Um, so now for this part, I just started doing this a little bit, but basically you want to be really careful pulling this down, because as you pull it, you can see it crinkles a bit here and like there. So you want to just go nice and slow, pulling this whole thing away from the edges, pulling this away from here. Don't let these little metal clips that we have up here um, catch on anything and cause you problems. I don't know if this will give me enough room to see stuff because I don't want to 
decrease my headliner, so I might end up taking this down, we'll see. But I'm gonna just move along the whole edge here and see if I can free at least that and see what I can see. Okay, so life update, I think I'm gonna take the center stuff out because I've got this whole edge free now, um, but with pulling this down, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it out without creasing it. I don't think that's an actual crease. It's just not looking super fun right now. Um, but I think I'm gonna take out this center bit here, see how that goes, feel like Chris Fix, and get some soapy water. Also, what I meant to say there was if you pry this from driver's side first, or front side first, then um, it releases these little guys in the back here and comes out real easy because this front side is um, just clips. Okay, so for taking out this bit, I actually found it was easier to just pry from over here with my bike tire tool. And then we've got at least one, two, three, four connectors to undo here. Maybe a fifth one over there that I can't see from my current position holding this camera. Um, but these clips clip into the plastic bits of the uh, roof up here. So you just take those out and then you should be all set to get the whole thing free. Behold, it's Frank and <laughs> Um, So I got those, yeah, it was just these um, four connectors, one, two, three, four, um, to get this down. For this front bit, I don't really have any tips. Um, what I found is that on this back side, there were these little clip deals that look like so. And there are those on this front side too. So there's these two that go, wow, that go closest to you here. And then these two up front are up in there or up in here somewhere. Um, so what I found was you pretty much just had to pull those down real good. And it's in a kind of weird spot, so pull from right around here, the little shoulder bit I'll call it. Um, when you're doing it, I've got my <laughs> covers off because when I did it I pulled pretty nice and hard on it and uh, popped my <laughs> little light bulbs out. So I took the covers off to get those free and I'll just put those back in when I get this up after. So this, for now, we'll go here and we can peep our eyesight technology. It's uh, cute stuff. So don't know what that's for. It's kind of cool. Don't know what that's for either. It's all also kind of cool. But there is that. It's like whatever this is, you got to take that out because otherwise you can't get this whole piece to drop. So for this one here, so for this one here, this one's two rows of pins. So just be nice and careful when you're pulling it out. Try and pull it straight out so you don't bend any pins. And then you should be good to go. Something I just noticed is we've got more of everyone's favorite pins here. These are white ones now instead of pink. So that'll be fun getting those out. What I did to get mine free is I just grabbed right up here, right up here, right above them pushed against here with my thumb and just gave it a good yank down, got them free. It's those obnoxious little clip deals again. So there's those. And now we're making pretty good progress. We'll see what we've got back here. All right, for the headliner bit on the back, it's yet again, more of everyone's favorite clips. One, two, three. What I did for these was I just slid my hand up along the edge here. It's real, real snug. Got it as close as I could to the base of this here because I knew that was sturdy and I wouldn't bend my um, roof liner. I just made a nice pancake of my hand, held my fingers as stiff as I could and just pried it down. Came over here, did the same thing. Got that one. Got this one. That's all free. Um, got my little seatbelt thing holding stuff up. Don't know what's in the middle there holding stuff so I'm going to go figure that out. Also I noticed on this driver's side here as I was messing around um, I was pushing this back up for a hot second and those metal clips for my little handlebars pushed back in so I don't know what I'm gonna do to get those back out but that'll be an exciting adventure and note when you're doing this once you've got it past like these are still poking out 
once you've got it out past those, <laughs> careful not to push this back up in because those little metal guys will just jam back into the little socket things and I don't yet know how to get those out. Um, it looks like you can get into it from up in here, so it shouldn't be too terribly bad to fix. So that is pending. Okay, so earlier I said zip tie these things for the handles and leave them in there. Don't do that, that's a lot of work. It's way easier. Take this, slip it on there, slip the other one, come on, on there, push that in, put your clips in place, and you're done. I think at this point it's just this middle bit here held in by something, so I'm going to try and figure that out and then I'll show you guys what's up, but otherwise that whole front section is basically just floating. Maybe there's something up in that front corner holding it. Um, maybe something up over there. Ooh, that's, that's exciting. But yeah, this whole backside is really free. So I'm gonna try and figure out this middle bit here, see what we can do. All right, well that was the thing with beauty. So look at that, favorite clip. More of those. So basically that one popped off. There's little slots up here where that one slides into so I'm gonna put that back but this other one came out nice just pulled right out what I did was I just held in here real good because there's this nice firm plastic piece just held in here pulled it down real good <laughs> popped it right out and now I've got like next to no room because this whole headliner is coming down on me all right so here it is the uh, downed headliner I'll go show you guys that uh looks like a little Franken car that one little, can't see it from here, pink guy that I need to put back into place. Um, let's see, this here is held in, it looks like, by, this would appear to just pull back. I don't want to mess up my airbag stuff, so I'm going to set my camera down for a moment, figure this out, and I'll be right back. Okay, so that wasn't that bad. It's just this little thing that you need to pull out of the way, and then this can pull back up. This is all like weirdly glued down, so I might actually just leave this snapped in place here to help support that. Because I don't think I'll need that much room to get in here and work. I'm glad I left my sunroof open. Haha, <laughs> here we go. Little pink guy, the one that came out nicely. And then the other one that didn't come out so nicely. So I'll see if I can... I'm going to go off camera and get a little screwdriver, pry that guy out. Slip it back into his... Uh, little socket there, so then it's easy to push back in when I'm done. What I ended up doing to fix this guy is I just crawled into my sunroof space here, pushed this up, slid it back onto that, and then just pulled this down, because it was going to be a whole lot of work to get that off with um, just a screwdriver out of that hole up there. Alrighty, we're moving onward and upward. So we've got that down. So we're going to go up through that back little hole here, here. Oh, come on, camera. This is downsides of having a heavy lens. Right up in here, we've got access to one of the bolts. I don't know if you can see it. Um, that guy. We're going to be taking that out through this hole here. That'll work. We've got access over here, too. Same thing. Right in through this one, that bigger one. All right, first one is out. What I did was I just took this off to hand to loosen it the rest of the way, um, and then just threaded it back until I um, felt the threads clicking like it was right at the end there um, and then just gently lowered it down so that is out I'm gonna set this guy here for safekeeping fun keeping whatever not really safe because I'm not really using him again we'll move on to the other side that wasn't all that bad got that side out clear to moving on all right, there are one, two, there's a third one right here, right there, three, four, this one's really tucked up in there, four is right up in here, so I'm going to loosen this guy and this guy to let this move down out of my way, and then I'll be able to get my ra ratchet up in there, six, seven, 
So there are indeed seven that we are taking out. We are only putting back in four, so I will be using liberal amounts of silicone. Um, for this guy here right by this, what is this, the C-pillar, um, don't let this little black plastic bit get in your way, just pull that down and then you've got straight access to that, otherwise if you try and go at an angle with your, if you try and go at an angle with your socket it might not seat right and you don't want to screw up the threads. So for um, these ones around the B-pillar here, what I ended up doing was taking out my, um, was taking out the two 10 mil bolts holding this guy and this guy. And then these just have little barbed hook things um, that just come right out. And then you've got free range of this to move that around and to get up to the other bolts in there. Let's see if I can show this to you. Hold up. Hold up. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. There. That guy. That guy. Clean shot. So this is now out of my way. It was previously way up in here. Couldn't get in there. So now that's all out of my way. Got room to work. Definitely do what you can to have reasonably good body mechanics when you're doing this part because it can get really taxing on your back and your shoulders just trying to work in these weird angles, reaching way over, wrenching stuff. It's not the most fun ever, especially for your back and your shoulders, but it's going to be so worth it. Alright, so at this point I've got five bolts out on the passenger side. It's not, sorry, five nuts out on the driver's side. We've got just the two left up closer to the front and then those are out of here and we are on with the install. Alright for these front two, so the last ones, we have to glove again. <laughs> um, I took off the extender for this guy and that made that one a lot easier and then I just worked from in my uh, space up here, gave me a good amount of room. And then for the front one, um, I just put my extender back on, pulled the little airbag bit out and then tucked my extender up into there um, and then just wrenched that from outside and that made that a lot easier on me um, so there's that got this side done they're now all officially out I'm gonna see if I can get these puppies out of here here we go alright I don't know how this is gonna go but I'm just gonna see if I can simply lift these guys out of here my glove is dirty that's fine all right, so this back plastic bit just pulls straight up. Running boards would be handy. I ain't got those. I don't come All right, so this just pulls right up and out. So far, so good. There we go. So you just wiggle it back and forth a bit until you've got the bolts free from their little spots. There's little rubber feet on the bottom of this to help dampen um, sound and vibrations and whatnot for you when you've got uh, the crossbars and a basket or whatnot up on here. Um, and those little rubber feet stick down in here kind of like with the uh, license plate LED upgrade that we did. So you just free the little rubber bits and then that comes right out. I should have set a parking brake beforehand, but now this comes right out. Look at that. Handy dandy. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just like I said in the instructions. All right, this is out. Let's get the other one out. And then get the, these dirty guys cleaned up. Just rock this back and forth a bit to get those little rubber feet free. Something I'm noticing as I'm doing this one is there's a little rubber. Here we go. That was just the plastic making noises. There's a little rubber felt type gasket thing here. 
along this whole edge and that likes to stick too so I just peeled that free and then it came right out. And with that, we have our crossbars are off, and I can't tell where this is focusing. There we go, we have our crossbars off. So all I really did here was I just cleaned them out a little bit. If you haven't seen Chris Fix's video on cleaning an engine bay, definitely watch that, because that was basically all I did here was just dry clean the thing and then just a little soapy water. <laughs> Cleaned that up, dried it up, got those all good to go. Let's get our rack on here. So what I did with this part here is I uh, took one of the cardboard pieces that came in the box, lined it up under the roof rack to put where the holes are, and then put a uh, side with the front, got it all lined up so I could see which holes they aligned with, took some masking tape to mark those so I know which ones to drill larger, I'm going to get my plus nuts and see um, if those will by chance fit through here, but I'm kind of doubting it, so I'm going to drill those bigger. Alright, so a little update, I was gone for a bit having dinner, got back, whipped up the 3 8 drill bit, got these puppies all drilled out. White balance is kind of whack right now because the sun's going down. But got all these drilled out. My tip for these would be uh, when you're doing them, just take your time, go nice and slow. Because when I tried to um, start with the bit going closer to full speed, um, it just bounced around all over and I didn't want it to chip anything. So I just set it in there nice and gentle and then just slowly eased it in until it um, ate away the edges of the existing hole. I took a file, filed the edges of them so they're nice and smooth, um, got all the little edges off, um, get rid of this, done with that, and I think we are ready for hardware. For now, I have only done the four on each side that actually mount into the roof rack because um, I figured I would put the others, I would try and leave every hole as small as possible. Um, just there's less physical area to fill afterwards for trying to keep water out of those little spots. Um, so yeah, for now I've got just the four that mount into the roof rack drilled. And now for a very fun update. So I've got the plus nuts in. That is that is our plus side. From this initial view, you see nothing wrong. You see nothing wrong. They all look great, and I'm probably going way too fast for you to even see anything. However, I had the joy and the pleasure of my bolt snapping because I tried snugging this one down too tight. So now, I don't know if you can see this, but I get to have the fun of taking my drill to the, oh goodness, this little puppy of a remaining bolt in here. So it'll be fun to get that out. So that's about to happen. Thank goodness they sent extra hardware. Um, my tip for this, when you're doing these, don't over tighten them at all. Um, another tip, as you're putting them in, the plus nut part likes to spin occasionally as you're trying to tighten it down. Um, so what I'd say for that is what I found most helpful is if you give it a nice solid crank on the first go around then that'll really um, expand the plus nut as much as possible from the start. And then you won't have to sit there waiting for the plus nut to try and grab. If the plus nut does keep spinning, what I found helpful for that is if you just cock it at an angle so that the inside bit of it catches on the roof and then that helps hold it and then you can tighten it down from there. Um, otherwise there's not a lot to it. You're just 
tightening stuff down. Okay, so I ended up taking a 7 64ths bit and I was able to just go straight through it, no problem, much at all. Um, just stuck it straight down in that uh, plus nut slot. Took uh, three good firm pushes drilling at full speed and it just went right through it. So I think at this point what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a uh, nut on the inside just to use that existing plus nut base since it's already there. Um, and then just have to tighten down into a uh, nut on the inside there unless I can get the plus nut out somehow so we'll see we just re-threaded that one plus nut because it's still in there I drilled it out um, re-threaded that and it's some weird metric size that was just that fit real nice um, but we don't have any bolts of that size to go in the hole the to match the threads that we did so I have to make a trip to Menards Menards is closed they closed right as <laughs> we got that tapped so I have to wait till tomorrow to pick up a bolt for that. And then other than that, it's we're pretty much golden. We just get the rack popped on, screw it in, pop a couple screws, bolts with some silicone in the extra little holes and call it a day pretty much, I believe. Find out. So that is all for today. All right, we are on day two of this roof rack thing heading to Menards right now to go pick up some elevator bolts for the extra holes from the factory rails. Uh, we're gonna go grab that one bolt for the plus nut that we re-threaded last night. Um, that's that weird metric size. So, should be able to get it all finished up today, get it all siliconed in place, and be ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we're here at Menards and it is my lucky day because my thread size was a 7mm by 1.0. 7mm by 1.0. This was the last one they had. So we are in luck. We've got our bolt. We can keep moving. Guys, I got a pet fish. I'll show it to you when I get back. Okay, so the silicone I chose to go with was this um, damp, clear, window siding, 100% waterproof silicone that I just got from Menards for a couple bucks. Back from Menards. Got all our hardware for filling those couple extra holes. I'll show you guys what I got here. Okay, so here's what I've got for filling the extra holes. I know this looks pretty bulky. I didn't want to use the um, extra plus nuts or the other hardware to make my own holes or whatnot, so I just went and got a bunch of stuff. So what I got was these, um, I think this is called end cap nuts. It's a little hex bolt. It's like an inch, inch and a half long. Um, and then I got a fiber washer. To stick against that. I'm going to stick that into the roof with some silicone. I went with the fiber washers instead of rubber washers because being in Minnesota I didn't want the heat and cold cycles to end up cracking the rubber ones and compromising it after a while. And I'm going to be siliconing it anyways so that'll provide um, little extra water sealing for these fiber ones. And then on the inside, I'm gonna have a just flat washer. I've got two of these guys just to act as spacers. These I just grabbed out of our extra bolts, not some bolt store. A lock washer and then this guy. And I've got these two spacers on here so that I can still use my 10 mil without the uh, extender because I don't have the deep 10 mil ones, I only have regular size. Um, so this will let me do that real well. I'm going to be able to tighten this down from the inside pretty well hopefully. And that ought to give us a nice good seal. I think I lied earlier and said that those brass nuts were 10 mil. They're 11 mil. Because the roof isn't very thick. And there was a chance that this guy would run out of threads up here, um, and I didn't want that to not hold or anything, so I put a spacer in there so that my nut would be on threads the entire time, full contact. And then I did a little lock washer just to help hold a little extra pressure um, to help keep it watertight. So, here we go, there's that. It's like 10 bucks at Menards. 
like I did for the previous holes, I'm going to go take my 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol stuff, and um, rub these guys clean so that I can silicone on there and get a nice good seal. Just got that first one just set in there real nice, and look how nice that looks with the little bit of like brown accent that has. It looks so good. Alright, so here's what we've got going. I've already got a set of these installed. These are what I'm using to fill the extra holes from the factory roof rails. There are seven bolts that hold in the Prinsu rack. Sorry, there are four, four, wow, four bolts that hold in the Prinsu rack. There were seven holding in the factory rails, so there were three extra holes per side that I needed to fill, so I just built these guys to do it. Um, the Prinsu solution was to use some of these guys with some bolts on the back and some washers. Um, but I didn't want something that stuck up quite that much. I wanted something nice and real slim, low profile. Um, and I kind of liked the color of these as soon as I saw them at Menards. Um, so I picked these up. I have six of each. There's already one installed, so that's why you're seeing only five here. Um, but the parts breakdown for these is um, first, this guy here is the joint connector bolt. This is a f uh, 1 fourth. 20, 1.18. Um, see if this will, if I can focus this here for you. So this is that guy. Try and hold this still for you. Fiber washers come two per pack. The flat washers and the lock washers, I already had it on hand, just because we have a big old jar of extra stuff. And then I got these brass hex nuts that are also a quarter by 20, just like the um, joint connectors. And I got these um, to finish it off. And I previously said I was thinking I was going to use these as spacers. I ended up not needing those because um, this setup right here with the space with the silicone and with the amount of material there is to go through for the roof, I ended up not needing these to create extra space. Initially I was thinking I was going to because I didn't want to <laughs> have my nut go up so far that it would be only partly threaded on, but it's fully connecting with all of the threads so it's got nice good contact and the lock washer is there to help hold that in place to give us some nice good confident waterproofing. Um, this while I'm at it is what we used to tap that hole that I accidentally blew through, see if I can find the right one here. Um, here we go. This is a 7 millimeter by 1.1 or 1.0 thread size, whatever. Um, so this just sits right in here. Can't do this one handed. And you tighten this down, you screw it in a little bit, back it off, screw it in a little bit more, back it off, screw it in a little bit more, back it off until you've gone all the way through. Used that, thanks to dad for <laughs> having that idea. Um, to re-thread that one that I busted out the bolt for last night because I over tightened it. Um, and we are back in business. I've got the one last bolt Menards had in stock of that seven millimeter by 1.0 metric size. The very last one they had in stock. So we are good to go. I'm going to get the rest of these put on. going to take a lot of patience um, to get everything all siliconed up. Try not to make too big a mess. Um, I found with this first one that if I wipe as I go, while it's all still wet, it has a nice clean... Ooh, let's focus, let's focus. It has a nice clean finish to it. and looks real nice. I'll try and show you the inside here. I just left this messy because it's whatever. Let's up that. Let's... There. That's that. That's 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 that. So what I found worked best for getting these in was I first took my flat washer, put silicone around it, pressed that flush uh, flush up on the inside, right in line with the hole there. Um, then put a dab of silicone around here, put my fiber washer down, put silicone on top of the fiber washer, put my bolt through, put my lock washer through on the bottom side stuck that to the extra silicone coming through the flat washer so that it'd stay, put my nut on there, 
tightened it down, wiped up the extra silicone, probably out of focus right now. And hopefully this shows the difference. I didn't wipe this one right after I put it in because I thought, oh, I'll leave that for extra waterproofing versus this one I did wipe right after putting it in. This one looks so much cleaner than that guy. This guy I'm going to have to go in afterwards and take off all this extra silicone here, whereas this guy is already all good to go. Per dad's genius suggestion, I just took a box with some stuff in it to keep it heavier and put my silicone on there um, so then I wouldn't have to keep using the squeezer gun to get it out. And then I just took one glove for each of the screws that I did, took a swipe of that, rubbed the washer around in my fingers to get it all nice and um, coated, put the flat washers in, did the same for the uh, fiber washers and the bolts on the top, um, and then just screwed it all together. Okay, so on my rack I got the uh, soundproofing trim piece, and I didn't want this gasket rubbing up against my paint and wrecking my paint, or chancing to. I don't think it will, but I went ahead and put some clear contact paper across the top here to give it a little protective coat and keep it hopefully from getting any sort of scratches. So I'm going to go ahead, it took me a bit to get this on here and get it nice and smooth, no air bubbles, so I'm going to go ahead and trim out the edges, push the edges down, and I think we should be set to get the roof rack on top. Alright, that was quite the ordeal. I've got the contact paper all on there now. Looks pretty good. So, at this point I think I'm going to take um, an old, ooh, where is my focus, there we go, an old bike tube and use that on the feet here to keep this um, from sliding or scratching as I'm getting this put up on top. So, Alright, so it was a fair bit of work, but I got uh, that old popped bike inner tube squeezed around each of these guys. I left a bit of extra so it'll be reasonably easy to pull off once it's up there. Um, got one on each of them so it'll help hold it in place while I'm working um, and keep it from scratching my paint. And then I think I'll just go around one by one and put the spacers in, get them screwed in, and go from tighten them down from there. Alrighty, so the little rubber mounting feet deals are doing an excellent job of keeping the paint nice and safe and keeping it nice and stable while it's up there. What I'm going to do now is uh, just one at a time go around and um, get the spacers and the bolts put in, get them siliconed up a little bit and then once those are all in then I'll tighten it all down. This thing looks incredible on here. I can't focus. So from the factory, the noise canceling strip's a bit long, so I'm gonna make sure this is right where I want it, and then I'm gonna cut it just slightly longer than I think I want it, because I can always go shorter. Um, and then I'll just tuck that up in there. But the rest of it fits real nice. Sit nice and flush. This contact paper is gonna, I think, do really well. There it is, this thing. Guys, this thing is clean. Looks ridiculous, that's also ridiculous. This thing, oh man, oh man. I have zero words, zero words even. I'll do a little slow-mo b-roll type thing for you once I've got it all tidied up. But for now, that is what it's looking like. 
This is from the top. Low key, wish I would have blacked these out before I put them on. So maybe that would be my tip to you is take a can of spray paint, spray paint them all black before you continue. Also check out how, how snug this sits. That is like perfection right there. Not my camera skills, just this cutout. This is like perfect size for a sharky fin. All right, there we have it. It's on, loving it. All right, I'm gonna get the whole inside put back together, but before I do that, I'm gonna reapply silicone to all of the plus nuts from the inside. All right, I'm gonna start my stopwatch and see, just out of curiosity, how long it takes me to get all of this put back together. Go.
five minutes. Whole thing is reassembled. Dropped four screws. Dropped four tabs. No, two tabs, sorry. That was a lot of work. All right, I think that's about it. If you have any questions about how I did any part of this installation, if I glazed over something too quickly, didn't show something well enough, or didn't explain something clearly enough, uh, just drop those questions down in the comments below, or DM me on Instagram at mnoutback, and I'll get back to you. I really enjoy answering questions and helping people learn things, so I'm excited to hear what you guys have for questions for me. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And if you do have an idea for a new video you'd like me to make, let me know, and I'll see what I can do for you. Special thanks to Chelsea, Kenny, and Mike at CBI Offroad Fabrication for helping make this possible, and for answering the couple questions I had about the installation. I'll leave their Instagram accounts right here, so make sure to go check those out. That's all for now. So, that's down, roof liner down, check, looking like a wacky snack. So if you've ever wanted to see the inside of a Subaru Outback, in all its glory, here is the intestines, my dudes. Oh, oh, oh. See that on camera like at all. Super nice <laughs> for pictures. Um. So yeah, there's our excitement for the day. Now to oh, let me go try and figure out those guys real quick. Here, there's, I'm gonna zip tie. Boy, see, I'm gonna zip tie these little suckers. So I gotta put them in my roof liner back in at all. Guys, where? Where'd you go? It's really easy to just slip back into place and pop right back in. So, good news, there actually are seven. There's that first one we took out, and then, oh my goodness, there are. Well, let's see if I can find these out for you. Just my other shot ahead of time. Oh, shoot, that wasn't recording. That was not recording the whole time I was just talking, but pretty much what I said, but I think it was so far that out of focus. Alright, we'll call it good there. <laughs> Whatever. Can't see it. Um, all I said was, I'm going to do this in 60. Here we go.
I'm paranoid. <laughs>